Good morning. Mm, it's way too damn early. It's way damn too early. Too damn, it's damn too early. It's too early to damn. I think we're at about 13 hours uh, for the week. So we are making good headway. We've got two huge days of riding ahead of us. I may ride for an hour today or whatever, but today's a travel day. You should not have emailed him. Uh, okay. Anything with that product type is gonna require the vent. Day work. Uh, we gotta get out of here, dude. We're already a little bit behind because freaking Travis is such an early bird. Um, but we are trying to get out of here in the next 15 minutes. We're in the RV, Travis is driving, we're headed to SoCal. Today, I wanna to tell you, because it's travel day and there's not like a whole lot going on, uh, I wanna tell you this really special story about my son and how we bonded. And also how it's been really difficult to bond with my son. Travis has been such a huge help with just the basic logistics of life. Uh, because he lives with me, there's so many things that he can help that you didn't think took so much time. But like right now, dude, driving to SoCal is an all day thing. And I, I'm just in the back of work. I'm putting in the grind. I don't even have to worry about it. I don't have to worry about navigation. It's just been really good. Okay, so I've had a really hard time bonding with my son and connecting with my son. He is nothing like me. He is the complete opposite of me. So it's taken me a really long time to figure out how to parent him because I only know how to parent me. And with someone who's passive and shy and emotional, but he hides his emotions, but he's, it's really strange. It's, and, and he's not that motivated and I'm fine with it, whatever, right? I just want him to be the happiest he can be. I would support him if he wanted to be a ballerina. I don't care what he does. I just know that right now for me to connect with him, bikes is the easiest way to do that. But we've done everything. We've done snowboarding, gymnastics, skateboarding, BMX, video game, like he's really into video games, so I try to play video games with him or be interested in that. But motos have been a huge bonding point for us since he was two. Okay, he started riding motos at two, which is crazy. Now I've told this story before a little bit, but so when he was four, I pushed him a little too hard. Like we got him this rocket ship of a moto. And this is when I had no money. So like getting him a new moto is, is not a small feat. And he wanted to play on the playground. He's like playing on the playground. I'm like, dude, we're here to ride. You know what I mean? Like, what are you doing? Why are you playing on the playground? And we kind of had this argument. And so then we got in the car and he like, we're fighting. And it's like, why are we fighting? Dude, we're supposed to be having fun. Like, this is what the point of this is. So then personally, I was like, okay, I'm not going to ask him to ride or go to the track uh, at all. I, I will take him if he asks me. And then he did not ask me to ride for years. It wasn't until he was seven, seven and a half before he was like, hey, I, I kind of want to ride again. But honestly, by that time, I actually was a little more financially stable to where it wasn't so stressful to take him moto riding because, bro, moto riding is so expensive. And then I actually ended up getting my own moto. And so then we just had this thing where like he really enjoys riding. I'm not just saying that. And he really enjoys riding with me. So then we had this thing where it was like really hard to connect with him uh at home or any other areas but at the track like dude me and him are just best buds okay so that's just a little backstory there but so then uh about a month ago we went to little loki for the night race so if you've never been out to a motorcycle race the smell of pre-mix is just it's so good. My boy, he's got new gear, he's got some new goggles. The kid, he's hyped right now.
Watching my son win his first race, and not because it was just whatever. This kid earned it. I saw something change inside of him that I've never seen in my son before. He overcame fear and adversity, and he pushed through this like pain threshold of, man, I'm afraid, and, and I just wanna like have fun, and I don't wanna be competitive. And this, I, I did not push him to do that at all. This was his 100% own decision. I don't know. It was like it was super. It was weird to me. I brought it up to you. It was uh, like we picked him up at school, and he was just down and didn't really want to be there. I guess in, in general. And just after that first moto, he just like wanted it, and it was weird to like see that. Came over to the scooter side, or did you already had that? No, this is my son. <laughs> And if you don't know anything about motos, it's a two moto format, like golf, your lowest score wins. So if you win, you get one point. If you get last, say there's 10 people, you get 10 points. So if you go one, one, you have two total points. That's the lowest score, you win. I was on the sidelines watching my boy jump every jump and just be on the edge and flying. He was so aggressive. I couldn't believe what I was watching. So Travis has been living with me for a while and he's really been able to see my son and how he behaves. This is out of the normal form, right? I've never seen him like, put effort into anything. It's or be aggressive. Great. Or aggressive at all. Like he moved from third to first in one corner. And he's never like that, so it's weird. <laughs> behind him, I jumped the first double that you told me to. I jumped the second one. All I saw was him like come up short, squiggle, and go to the side of the track and crash. This like whatever race in a town of wherever with no stakes, watching my son win, I, it was the greatest night of my life. It was the greatest night of my life with my son. And so then I felt so inspired to do well myself. And I was like, bro, if my boy is gonna just shred, then I have to shred. Hi. So it was an amazing day. Uh, I rode actually, I rode actually really, really well. Uh, I was riding in the novice class and so like that's kind of sort of cat three-ish, I guess, but you know, these young bucks, bro, they're flying. Uh, I did masters as well and uh, I think I went two, one for the overall win in the masters race. And then in the novice class, I think I did six, three. 
Uh, but that third place in the second moto, I was really happy with. Dude, on that second moto in the novice, I got such a good start. I held my own, I rode aggressive, and all of it because I saw my son have a change inside of him. Now, I wanna get to the moral of the story here is that you gotta give your kids time to develop. Let them find their reason, their why. Because, I mean, I could push them. Moto dads do it all the time. And then they burn out. But you gotta want it. And at that race, he wanted it. There was nothing I could have said or done any differently. It was all him. So, we're actually riding with the Bros Ride Bikes kids, Jack and Eli. So it's so perfect to get their perspective on this. Dude, these kids are ripping. If you don't follow them, you should because they are absolutely crushing it. And so it's so perfect to get, how old are you? 14. Yeah, he's 14. What drives you? Honestly, I think just the feeling of like that big of an accomplishment, it's like such a good feeling. And it just like motivates me so much to be in like so much pain. And it's just But who awesome are you doing that for? You're doing that for your dad? No, it's just for me. Just cause it's an awesome time. Riding bikes is like what I absolutely love doing. So like you want to get out and ride right now? 100%. So then you, you're watching your bro absolutely murder. Does that make you want to do the same? Yeah, and when I ride with him, it's like we play a lot of like cat and mouse games and like I try and like beat him up climbs and stuff. But half the time he gets me a lot. It's so much more fun riding with him and he motivates me a lot. So these kids absolutely are, have been crushing it for a couple years. So it's not just like, like you can fake it for a little while. They are doing more and more every year and they are no joke, legit strong. We did this ride last year, earlier this year. Dude, these kids were flying. It's my day off and tomorrow's a huge day. And since I'm riding right now, I'm trying to keep it under 140. Now, maybe that doesn't seem like a big deal, but when they're all playing and having fun and going hard, your boy wants to do the same. But I'm really trying to stay disciplined here. Keep it at 140. Why? Are we gonna smash downhill? Um, you don't have the gears for that and they don't use either, so. Yeah, we do. Yeah. You have big boy gears? Yeah. Oh, let's go, it's truck time. almost a disaster. Did, did Tim just tail it? Wow. So relax this leg. So what we're looking for, for you specifically, is two spots to get all extra tight. So there's a, like way up here, is angry, you feel that? That's like, it's dead. Why, why did my body protect that spot so viciously? Cause uh, you don't like, it, it's lacking tolerance to tension. So. I mean, it, that's involuntary. You touch yeah. it and, my, and like, I won't punch you. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So the thought process here is, if you're getting pissed off, tight, and angry here, the opposite corner is this. Okay. Right? They're far apart, but this is the opposite corner. So you need this stability to allow this to fire. I, I feel like my body is made out of marshmallows. 
Like I'm soft and just bleh. It's just so crazy when you spend a little time with Tim, you might even feel so fit and so strong and then he puts you in these positions where you're like, you don't even understand how a body can move that way. And just the whole like harder to kill thing is so easy to forget. But what he had said earlier, and I thought it was a really good point, was that it's sort of like asking Chef Ramsay what his favorite spice is. That's not, that's a dumb question. What do you mean your favorite spice? Like you, the, it all depends on so many different things and there's so much context that goes with it. And so when it's like, okay, well, how are you feeling? Then he combines two different workouts, but variations to those different workouts to give me this one dish that's painful. <laughs> and so in the whole idea of like this train, like a pro challenge, being a pretend pro, man, this, I would say I need way more time allocated towards this uh, than I really do riding, to be honest. Sometimes you want to feel tired and that you've destroyed yourself. After this, when I start walking just normal after this, I feel better. I feel a better human. If I do a five hour bike ride, I feel like a, t a terrible human. I'm just trashed. But this, even though it hurts a lot and it's hard and it's difficult, you leave here feeling improved. much of it we're crushing but it's very hard and so right now tim his boy and travis went out scooting and riding bikes and checking out christmas lights they're gonna go to a skate park that's everything i want to do right now but here's the thing is like you have to be disciplined enough to go dude that sounds like so much fun but it's not where i need to be right this moment I need to be in here. I, I've got some day work I gotta fat finish up on. I'm gonna try to start the edit because tomorrow morning we're starting a ride at six in the morning. So that means I gotta be up at five. So then when am I gonna have to edit the video? It's like, it, anyways. Bro, I would do the bowl hack at Chipotle even if I was a billionaire, okay? Cause it's just the best way to do Chipotle. Also, Travis uh, went and got this for us and I said, dude, do you know what my order is? And he's like, yeah, bro, I got it saved. And I was like, are you sure? And he's like, yeah. Comes back, forgot the guac for the chips. So he's fired. Yeah. <laughs>